Good afternoon and thank you for joining us again on Frank Talk with Omo B. This edition I'm going to be answering a question that was sent in by a mother. I believe you have a daughter and that's the reason why you're keen to have an answer to this question. Um, typically a lot of us have children and we struggle to tell them about um, their bodies. I think one of the reasons why this happens is because as a typical African woman, most of us are not comfortable with our sexuality and we're not used to talking about our bodies. We don't talk about our intimate organs and we even cringe at the sound of the names of the body parts that we believe to be private. So um, it can be a bit difficult to tell your children about the changes that would happen in their bodies. So this mother has sent me a question and it is, how do I prepare my 10 year old for menstruation? So thank you so much, mum, for sending that question in. I'm going to talk through this step by step and I'm hoping that you can watch this video again and again so that you can be comfortable and be confident um, enough to discuss this with your daughter. I will start by saying that a lot of 10 year olds actually know quite a lot. They know more than you think they know. The reason being that they've been raised in a generation that is slightly different from the one in which we were raised. So a lot of 10 year olds are happy to discuss their bodies. They're happy to show their bodies. They're happy to Ask questions. You know, for instance, I can tell you, um, let me share with you what happened. I went out with my daughter over the weekend. We went for a function. And my daughter actually asked a question. And when I heard that question, I thought, really, you would ask that? And it was a very pertinent question. But I wouldn't think of asking that question when I was that age. One, I was extremely, well, don't let me use this extremely. I was shy. And two, I would have thought, no, you don't ask such a thing in public. But she did. So they talk amongst themselves. They talk amongst their friends. They're curious. So they ask questions about body parts. They want to know. So if you are the type who was like me those days, when they ask you, mom, what is this part of the body for? You go, oh, you know, well, what were you bothered about that? But they are bothered about that. And if you don't tell them, somebody else will. So... They speak amongst their age mates about little things and some schools start to teach them about their cha the changes in the body quite early on in life. So for a 10 year old, as much as most of us are still shying away from this, I want to tell you that most 10 year olds need to know. In fact, all 10 year olds need to know their body parts by name. Your 10 year old should be able to call vagina a vagina. There is no way going about it. It is a vagina and there is a use for vagina. In your talk, you know, in your laughing moments, in your jesting moments, you can choose names that you want to call it. There's so many names. People call it flower. People call it, you know, girly beads, which is what I call it with my daughter. We call it girly beads. People call it privates. There's so many words you can use for it, but let them know the exact name. Okay. Now, ask them if they thought of how they would look when they grow up. I'm talking about starting the conversation now. He said, look at me, darling. I used to be this size. So you can show them their baby picture and show them the picture. Now at 10, say, what do you think you will look like? And about 10 years time, most of them will tell you, I think I'm going to look like you, mommy. So that is a nice place to start. Listen to their answers. They know more than you think they know. You may get a word or something that they will say. And you will use that as a leverage to start a present discussion with them. If they have no clue at all, start by telling them that little girls grow up into grown-up ladies and their bodies change as they go. Now, you can start by explaining to them that this thing here in our skull, which is our brain, controls how our bodies change. It controls all the growths that we have in our body. It's the one that tells our fingers to move. It's the one that tells our lips to move. That way, they can start to think that, look, this is a magical change that is happening within their body. 
Tell them that the same way there are alarm clocks, the brain alarm clock goes off. And at a particular age, which you are or you're going to be very shortly, your alarm clock is going to go off and you will start seeing a few new things that we're going to be excited about. Now, there was a website that I found quite helpful. I think I'm going to find that website and I'll post it as a link under this so that you can direct your children to it. Now, let me tell you what I did. I started the discussion with my daughter quite early and I used to just throw questions at her. And then she'll go, mm? most of the time she'll look at me as though she's a bit embarrassed, but I choose to not wait for an answer then. I just give her a little longer. And then I say, darling, have you had a thought about what I asked you the last time? And that way she'll feel like we're having the discussion at her pace and not mine. And then one day I opened to this website and I said, darling, I'd like you to check something out on the internet. She doesn't have a lot of access to the internet. So when I give her something on the internet, she thinks this is going to be fun. Mom wants me to see this. So I left her on that web page and I say, come on, have a read. So I left her with that. The same thing I did with my son at the time when we started to talk about those. I gave them the website and I said, have a read. And she goes, oh, oh, really? And I thought, what was that? Did you find something that was interesting? And I tell you, she started to tell me some of the things that the girls in her class were starting to talk about. So that is interesting. These people want to hear, they want to hear the raw truth and they want to hear it from basis or, or, or sources that are trusted. So make sure they hear at the right time. So this is how I arranged it and I'm hoping you can bring yours in in any way that you like. But let me just read it out to you how I arranged it. I said, so when the brain alarm clock goes off at about age nine or 10 or above that, one of the first thing you start to notice is that your breasts, breasts, you can call it any other names, but breasts are breasts. You notice that your breasts start to hurt a little bit. Okay. They need to know that it's going to be a little bit so they're not scared that something is going to happen to their body that is going to cause them a lot of pain. So you tell them it's going to start to hurt a little bit. And that is because the breasts are ready to start growing. Most girls who are 10 year olds in the developed world and in developing world, they already wear some kind of camisole. They wear something that they wear to school. So most of them are excited at the thoughts of wearing their first bra. And they already know that at some point that their breast will grow. So you need to let them know that when this is going to start, they may have a little bit of discomfort, which tells them that the breasts are ready to go. So you will tell them that most of the time this will happen on one side and after a short while, the second one will start. And after a short while, the pain will disappear. Whilst that is going on, you may also notice that you start to have hair on your girly bits, on your private or whatever you call that. See? And you see, as you start to make, tell them this, they are getting interested in what you're talking about. Tell them that the breasts are going to grow. They're going to start having hair. They may have hair in their underarm. They may have hair on their girly bits. As that is going, they will notice that the body too is starting to change. For instance, some will notice that their hips are starting to get a bit wider and rounder. And you will tell them, make it fun for them by explaining to them the outcome of this. It will make you far more beautiful than mommy is. A lot of girls want to be beautiful and they need to know that the changes that are happening in their bodies will give them good results rather than change them. People can get anxious. Children can get anxious about changes, even though these changes are natural. So you need to help them see an outcome. So make it simple by explaining to them that it's going to be a beautiful outcome afterwards. So going forward, after all these changes that I've mentioned, you need to explain to them that when the alarm goes off, there are other things that are happening within the body that they may not see. For instance, every woman has got something within their body which releases eggs and these ones, the alarms go off to and these ones get them ready for full womanhood, for full adulthood. So let me, let me read it out to you. Whilst these are going on, your ovaries, which are special organs in women, are now waking up. That means they've been sleeping for a long time. Okay? A lot of magical things are happening within the body. As soon as the ovaries wake up, 
they start to produce some juice which bring which wake your womb up. So the ovaries wake up, the wombs wake up, all because of the alarm clock. So the alarm clock goes, the breast starts to change, the body starts to change, and the ovaries wake up, and then the womb wake up. And most of the time they will ask you, where is my womb? How come I can't see it? And you just tell them, it's in the bottom of your belly, and everybody's womb is hidden away, so nobody can see it. Children are going to ask you all these questions, so there's no way you can cut corners. So you need to be ready with an answer. That's why I said, watch this again and again, so that you'll be comfortable about discussing this, so that when they ask you questions, you can talk to them about it. So, I decided to put this in because I think some girls, some young girls may ask you, Mommy, I'm not ready to have a baby, so why does my womb need to make up, wake up? So you will tell them the same way we, learn, we need to practice a song many times before we master it is the same way your womb needs to practice how to produce a baby when you grow up and you're ready to produce a baby. Because they will ask you. I've had children ask me. I've had, you know, little girls who come to see me ask me that question. And I think I should just throw that in. Now, you explain to them that at some point, every month after their womb is now fully ready, they will need to bleed. You need to say the right word. They will have blood coming out of their girly bits. So that they don't get scared and think that they're hurt the first time they start to bleed, which may be a day when they're in school. So you've already prepared them and you've told them that all the body changes means that your womb that has been asleep for a long time wakes up. And how you know is that you start to bleed from your girly bits, which is connected to your womb. Explain to them that this will happen once a month. I must stop here and explain to mothers that most girls who start having their periods do not have regular periods. So even if you have a 10 year old, a 12 year old, a 13 year old, within two years or so of starting their periods, most of the time the periods are not regular. They may have it now and they don't have anything for four to six months. As long as they're well in themselves, you don't need to worry. So you need to know this as a mother, even though you don't need to tell your 10 year old. Now, I say this in completion, there are lots of things that will be happening in your body once you are a little older than nine years. If you don't understand what they are, come and ask me. What you're doing is you've given them a little bit of information, which is going to be topic of discussion in school the next day, because they're going to get to school and they're going to say to their friends that my mommy told me that there's an alarm clock here that's going to go off. And, you know, there's a lot of drama about it. And hopefully their own mothers have already advised them and they've told them what it is. So you can never prepare a, a child 100% for menstruation because it's totally new to them. But you can give them a little bit of information that can help them to be ready, to be excited about it. Children want to be excited. They don't want to be given the huge responsibility of having to worry about the changes in their body. So make it simple. Let them know that you went through exactly the same thing. Otherwise, you wouldn't have been able to have them. Let them know that every woman goes through the, this change and the time differs from one person to the other. Some people, the alarm clock goes off at 10. Some people, it doesn't go off until 12. So they know that they're not anxious if they don't start to have their periods or they don't start to have breast buds at the time when other people do. I'm hoping that this has helped. The question you've asked me is, how do I prepare my 10-year-old for menstruation? I say, one, start to talk to them about the body. Let them know the names of their body parts. Let them know the duties of their body parts. The body parts that are hidden, find ways in which you can express what they do. For instance, the womb. Let them know that babies are kept in the womb and babies grow in the womb. That sort of a thing. So we don't hide anything away from them. Tell them that they've got an alarm clock within their brain that goes on. And once that goes, a lot of changes start to happen. They notice the changes in their breast. They notice it in their underarm. They notice it in their privates. And after that, the same clock turns on something within their tummy, which is the ovary that produces small eggs on a monthly basis. And after this happens, it wakes their womb up and they may start to bleed. 
The rest of the questions will come along once they started to bleed. They may ask you, is, is, uh, is my bleeding going to be painful? It's difficult to answer this because one person's period is different from the other. You know, it can be genetic, it can be familiar that you have painful periods, but most of the time it's because there is something that is causing this within that family. So if you have any further questions about this, please feel free to ask me. It's askdrjeffries at gmail.com. I hope I've been able to answer that question and I hope that you can now have a reasonable discussion with your daughter. You don't need to be an expert to do this. As I said, I'm going to share the link on this page as a comment under this discussion, which is a website that you can share with your daughter, you can share with your son, and it is very simple and they will understand the changes within their body and they can enjoy um, the changes that take them into teenage years. Thank you very much and God bless.